boys and girls. I am Pastor Joel Nemhard, and it is my delight to present to you the children of Toronto Central Seventh-day Adventist Church as they present this morning's worship service under the theme, Connecting Like Jesus. It is my hope that we will be blessed as we receive this special presentation. May God bless you all. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day you have given to us. We're grateful for everything we have. We hope that your Holy Spirit is guiding us through every decision we make. We now ask you, Lord, to help us go through this virus. Help people all around the world who believe in you. Help our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, and children to get better. You are the light in all this darkness. Bless the pastors in the church. Bless all the churches in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Sabbath to all and welcome to Camp Meeting 2021. Our theme for this year is Connecting Like Jesus. I hope you stay connected to Jesus through our inspirational program. In Christ Jesus, then I have reason to be proud of my work for God. Romans 15 verse 17. May your hearts be blessed as we worship and connect like Jesus. Welcome and happy Sabbath. Yes, you're right. I am praying. Uh, but you didn't have to come all the way to this quiet, lonely place to pray. You could have prayed at home. That is true, Macy, but I'm actually saying my grace. I always do before I eat. Oh, you're here to eat some fresh, green, juicy, delicious grass. No, Macy, I eat grass every day. Today, oh, I'm going to eat some delicious bread and fish. Really? Where are you going to get bread and fish from? I heard that yesterday there were more than 5,000 people here. Yes, that's true. I was here too. You, you were there? So is it true that every single person got a belly full of bread and fish? Oh, I want some. But, but, that was yesterday. How do you expect to get that food today? So, oh, that's not going to happen every day? No, but... That won't happen every day at all. So let me tell you exactly what happened. Okay, Maisie, tell me exactly what happened since you were there. Maybe I can find out where they're serving bread and fish today. Okay, well, remember I told you that I was flying around and following that man that they called Jesus? Well, I've seen him heal lots and lots of people. I've seen him turn water into wine. I've seen him heal a child in Cana. I've seen him heal a blind man. I saw him heal Jairus' daughter. I saw a woman get healed just by touching the hem of his garment. I've seen him calm a storm. Many, many people follow him. I follow him. Wow! Yeah. You saw all those events from the sky? Yes, you could say. I'm the disciple of the sky. Hey, I like that. The disciple of the sky. I'm the disciple of the sky. Disciple <laughs> of oh, the sky. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Okay, tell me what happened yesterday. I'm hungry. Well, Jesus heard some very sad news about his cousin John. He was so sad. He went far off on a boat to this very quiet spot where we are now. We heard he was coming here, and we walked and flew and followed him. Even sick people followed him. And Jesus, well, even though he was sad about his cousin, he had compassion and he healed the sick people. Wow, he sounds like a wonderful person. <laughs> he is. Tell me more. Well, the evening was coming, and I heard the disciples tell Jesus to send all the people away. Why would they tell him to do that? Well, they said it was getting too dark, and there was no food for all the people to eat. Plus, there weren't any nearby places to buy food. Did the people leave? Where did they get food? No, they didn't leave. Jesus told the disciples not to make the people leave. And Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, found a little boy with his lunch. Mm. He had two fish and five loaves of bread. Yum, yeehaw, that's what I want to eat. What 
happened next? Jesus asked the people to sit down in groups. He took the two fish and the five loaves. He looked up to heaven. He gave thanks and he broke them. He kept breaking them and breaking them. He gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. We all had lots to eat. My stomach was so full. Everybody was full. Oh, 5,000 people were fed? <laughs> More than 5,000. There were lots of women and children, too. Well, that's what brings me here today. I'm going to look on the grass to see if any pieces of bread or fish were dropped or thrown away. Yeah. I'm sorry, Buck. You won't find any leftovers. Why? Well, after everyone had eaten and everyone was all full, Jesus told the disciples to gather the pieces of leftovers. He said they're not supposed to waste anything. The disciples collected 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish pieces. Wow, yeehaw, that's a miracle. That's exactly what all the people said. They said, he is the prophet who has come into the world. So, I guess I won't find any leftovers of bread and fish here today, right, Macy? No, Buck, but you could just eat the fresh, juicy, delicious green grass. Oh, well, vegetables are good for you anyways. Well, Buck, I'd better be on my way. Where are you going now, Macy? I'm going to share the good news of Jesus with people everywhere. After all, I'm the disciple of the sky. <laughs> bye! Yeehaw! Bye, Macy! Welcome back to Nature Time with Naomi, and I'm Naomi. And today we're going to be talking about rabbits. Let's start with some fun facts. Rabbits, rabbits live on every continent except Antarctica. And 25 species live in North America. That's where I live. And here's another fun fact. Rabbits aren't rodents rodents. They are legomorphs. I know many of you may be seeing on TV that kids, that rabbits eat carrots, but actually that's not the case. Rabbits actually eat grass and hay. If they eat too much carrots, they will get, they will get very sick. The largest rabbit is about four feet. Wow, that's very big. Another fact is, bunnies and rabbits are the same thing. They're not two different species. They're not two different kinds of animals. They're the same thing. And rabbits, rabbits are at the bottom of the food chain. So they really need their senses. Like their ears can turn 180 degrees around their head and their eyes can see 360 degrees around them wow that's amazing and, and rabbits need to eat long strands of hay so their so their digestive system can keep on going if it stops they will they will get a sickness that is life threatening And rabbits are very social beings. They don't like to be alone. And rabbits really like being with their own kind. And in the wild, they live in stuff called colonies. Rabbits in captivity live eight to 10 years. And rabbits in, and rabbits in the wild live one to two years.
Another fact, fun fact is, rabbits, when they're happy, they like to purr. That's why there's similarities to cats. Another fun fact is that rabbits have split lips. So when they're picking up grass or hay or something like that, they, they use their lips like a finger. They split it in half to, to get the food, and then they chew it. And it isn't good to, to put rabbits on their back because that actually kind of harms them because they pretend to play dead. They think it's a predator that's coming to get them. And another thing is, rabbits hold grudges. So if you put on some loud music and you forget that your rabbit's inside, they, they will hold a grudge on you for a really long time and it's actually very hard to gain that trust on a rabbit. There you have it, another episode of Nature Time with Naomi. See you next time, bye. The scripture reading is St. John 6, verses 8 to 10. We will be reading from the New International Version. It reads, Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have all the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. This, this is, is the, the word of the Lord, and may he add his blessings to the reading thereof. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we come before you on this holy Sabbath day, thanking you for sparing our lives to see another week. I pray that you bless us on this holy day as we worship you. I pray for all the adventures and the youth like me in a very special way and continue to cover them with your love. I pray for all the sick with the COVID virus. I pray that you will help them and grant them healing to carry them through another week. Bless each member of our church and all of those listening online right now. I pray for our pastors and their families. Dear Lord, bless our speaker for today. Give him the knowledge to deliver the message for us. Finally, I pray for you to do save us in your kingdom when you come. Amen. Gratitude and giving. Expressing our thankfulness to God is also a way of worshiping Him. When we are faithful in returning the Lord's tithes and in giving a free will offering, it's also an act of expressing our gratitude to Him for His many blessings upon us. In 2 Corinthians 9 verses 7, we learn that God loves a cheerful giver. Jesus wants us to follow his example and help to meet people's needs. Some of these needs may be food, clothing, a home, or shelter. Kind words of encouragement and a visit when they are sick. You can help others by visiting our local church's website and click donate. Please return your thought and give a liberal offering to help your local church so we can help others. Remember, God said in the Bible, bring all the sides into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3 verses 10, we just have to trust Him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank for this day. Please bless the offering and may it continue doing your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, hey! Good morning! Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I am so happy you joined me this morning. Today's story is about a little girl. The Bible calls her the little maid. Now this little girl was taken captive. Yes, the Syrian army had invaded her village and she was taken captive. I can imagine she must have been really scared. 
But as God would have it, the person that she worked for was called Captain Naaman. Now, Captain Naaman probably treated this little girl very well. This little girl also remembered the true God. It turned out that one day, Captain Naaman became very sick. Yes, he had leprosy. Now, back then, leprosy was a dreaded disease. I mean, nobody wanted leprosy. Because when you had leprosy, it meant you were not going to get a cure. So this little girl saw her mistress very sad, and she decided to tell her about Prophet Elijah. So she said to her mistress, I know someone. I know someone who can help Captain Naaman. Well, the mistress told Captain Naaman, and Captain Naaman decided to set out to go find Prophet Elijah. Now, when he got to Prophet Elijah, Prophet Elijah sent his servant to tell him, all you need to do is dip in the water seven times. Now, at first, Captain Naaman didn't really want to go because, you know, he wanted to go to a nice river where the water was beautiful. But then the servant said to him, his soldiers, you know, if the prophet had told you to do some big thing, you would have done it. Why don't you just go and dip? And you know what, boys and girls, he was obedient. And he went and dipped. And after the seventh time, he was completely whole. Now, this story is very significant because this little girl showed courage. She had courage to talk about what she believed. And that is the true God. I want to encourage you, boys and girls, no matter where you are, whatever you're called to do, you stand firm for Jesus. You stand firm for God. Let everyone know that there's a God in heaven who can help. You be strong and courageous, just like this little girl. See you next time. In a rain shower, God made these things to show us what He's like. And if we look, we can find that we are surrounded by God's wonderful love. Then I remember God's love, God's wonderful love. It makes me want to sing and shout. God's love, God's wonderful love. It's wonderful, wonderful love. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all those watching locally and across the world on our online platform. I'd like to thank Pastor Chichester and Ontario Conference Children Ministry Department for giving me this opportunity to share God's word with you on this holy Sabbath day. Isn't it wonderful even though we can uh, hug each other, shake each other's hand, or greet each other in a usual way, God has still provided a means in which we, in which we can still fellowship with one another. Wherever you are this morning, I want you to give yourself a big hug. And if there's someone beside you, give them a hug also. Oh, I'm sure that felt good. Isn't God good all the time? And all the time God is good? 
Repeat after me on the count of three. God is great and there's no debate. Are you ready? One, two, three. God is great and there's no debate. Okay, I hope now everyone is awake. The title of the sermon this morning is Sharing Lunch with Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Father, how it's another beautiful Sabbath day. Make us learn more about you. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our theme for the camp meeting this year is connecting like Jesus. Now what does it mean to connect like Jesus? Hmm. Connecting like Jesus is doing the same thing for others that Jesus would like to do for you. When we share the wonderful things that God has done in our lives with someone who, I, who, might, know, who I might not know him, we are connecting like Jesus. While Jesus was on the earth, he used every opportunity he had to connect with people who he met, to let them know God the Father loved them and wanted to save them. It did not matter where they came from. He cared for all of them. When we connect like Jesus, we will want to do the same thing. Wherever we are at school or on the playground, let us be like Jesus and tell everyone we met that Jesus loves them. Repeat after me. At our respect, I'll connect like Jesus. One, two, three. At our respect, I'll connect like Jesus. Another way we connect like Jesus when we share with others. Repeat after me on the count of three. When we share, we show Jesus we care. One, two, three. When we share, we show Jesus we care. There are so many things we can share with others. We can share with our toys. We can share our love to one another. And we can share God's message with someone who has never heard it. In the Bible, it tells us a story about a boy who connected like Jesus when he shared his lunch. The Bible does not tell us the boy's name who shared with his lunch with Jesus. So let us call him Jonathan. It did not mention his life before he met Jesus that faithful day, so let us, just use, let us just use our imagination. Jonathan was a young boy who lived in a city called Galilee a long, long time ago. He and his family heard that a preacher who performs many miracles was coming to town. They all planned as a family to go see this man, but the day, to go pl they, but the day they planned to go, Jonathan's parents could not make it. Mom! I still want to go see the man who performs miracles. Jonathan begged his mom. As long as he met up with his cousin Ruth at the mountain, where this man will be preaching. Jonathan's mom prepared lunch for Jonathan and his cousin Ruth that day. It was Jonathan's favorite lunch, barley bread loaves and fish. His mom prepared five loaves and two fish, one for Jonathan and one for his cousin Ruth. When Jonathan got at the mountain where the, pe where the people gathered to see the preacher, he saw what has must been over 5,000 people. Wow! Look how many people have come to see the miracle-working preacher. He must be very special, Jonathan said to himself. As Jonathan looked for his cousin Ruth in the crowd, a soft voice came and spoke to him. Hi, young man. My name is Andrew. My teacher would like to know if you'll be so kind to share your lunch with us. So many people have come to hear my teacher speak, but they are about to leave because they are so hungry. Where is your teacher? Jonathan asked softly. He's over there. As Andrew, Andrew pointed towards the mountain, Jonathan looked straight into the eyes of the teacher while the teacher smiled back at him. John, Sir, Jonathan said to Andrew, I only have Five loaves and two fish. How will, how will the, this feed all these people? Andrew said with a smile, my teacher will make it all work. Just have faith. Jonathan first thought to himself, if I gave my lunch away, what would Ruth and I have to eat? But looking back at the teacher, Jonathan knew that it would all work out. Later that day, John, Jesus multiplied the five loaves and the two fish, and was able to multiply over five feed over five thousand people. Jonathan was able to connect like Jesus because he was willing to share his lunch with Jesus that day. Jesus took Jesus was able to took was able to multiply it in which everyone who came to see him that day was fed.
When we decide to connect like Jesus by sharing his love, Jesus will take that love and multiply it, just like what he did with the five loaves and the two fish. So remember, everyone, at our respect, let us always connect like Jesus. God bless. Welcome back to Activity Zone with Simone. My name is Simone and this is my guest Lizzie. Hi friends. So Lizzie, we've been talking about connecting like Jesus and there's no better way to connect than through prayer. Okay Simone, but sometimes when it's my turn to pray, I can't remember what I want to pray about. Hmm, well, I have the perfect craft and solution for you. This prayer tin will help you and the people watching at home remember what to pray about when it's their turn to pray. What do you think? Do you like it? Yeah. Can you tell our friends what we'll need? Here's what you need. Stickers, strips of paper, glue and glue markers, popsicle sticks, stip um, um, Crayons, I can. Here is how you can make your prayer tin. Step number one, grab a tin can and wash it out. Your tin can can be big or small. It doesn't matter the size. Any tin can will be perfect for this craft. You can also use a cup or a mug. Use what you have in your home. Step number two, Write the words prayer tin on a piece of paper and then decorate it. Make it your own and make it unique. On my prayer tin, I made doves and angels and flowers. Step number three, glue your piece of paper around the circumference of your prayer tin. This part may be a little tricky, so take your time and be patient. Step number four, grab a couple of popsicle sticks or cut out some strips of paper and write some things you want to pray about. I want to write about my family. I'm going to write their names on my pieces of paper and my popsicle sticks. Step number five, it's time to pray. Grab one or two popsicle sticks from your prayer tin and start praying. Praise the Lord. We have come to the end of our children's church program. And as we close today, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us. We ask you in a special way to remember all of our children, locally as well as globally. In an age and time when this pandemic has brought on so many unique challenges upon children and their families, we pray that you deliver us from this virus. We pray for protection from danger seen and unseen. We pray for children who are not well, that you will touch them and that you will heal them. For parents who have been affected by this virus, that you will restore them to health and that you will provide for them if perchance they have lost their jobs. We pray in a special way, Lord, for children who may have lost a parent or parents in this crisis, that you will provide for them and that you will heal them, that you will ensure that they will grow up to be outstanding children, not only for this world, but that they will shine throughout all eternity of symbols of children who trusted in you. And now as we continue with our camp meeting program, we pray that you will help us to continue to connect like Jesus so that millions of children and millions of men and women may find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whom to know is life eternal. These mercies we ask with your choicest blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. All around.
Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine.